Hi guys, Brian the Scare Lion back with another video and here with a recap of what happened at Super Showdown. Um, it, it was shit. It was shit. I spent most of the time fucking shouting at my at my TV, just shouting about how fucking bad it was. Literally, me and Tom had started watching it together. Like you can see him just there in the background. Um, we we started watching it together, and Tom made it through a few matches before going. Do you know what? I can't fucking watch this anymore. It was that awful. I, I am angry. I am angry at this fucking show. Coming from a, a, a proper wrestling fan. Like, I, I love wrestling. This hurt. This, this show hurt. I know I'm talking a lot about it before I actually get into the matches, but... Mm, I, ex I expected bad. I did not expect this bad. But with all, be all that being said, let's get into the actual matches. Now, the first match that we saw was on the kickoff show. We were kind of worried that it wasn't going to happen because it didn't happen until there was like 10 minutes left on the kickoff show. But uh, it was the Usos versus the Revival. Um, it, it was a decent match. Like it, it was a tag team match between two of the best. I think the thing that really pulled away from this was the fans, really. Which is a theme of the night. The, the fans just seem to gobble up what... WWE was putting up, putting out there for them, which kind of sucks. It was, it was a good match. Like it was a really decent match between two of the best tag teams in the world. Um, we ended up seeing the Usos walking away with a victory because, well, did we really expect any different? Uh, they finished it up with a double super kick, one, two, three, done. Next, we moved on to the main show, and the first match that we got there was Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin. This match. I uh, really wasn't expecting much from it. It was a little bit better than I kind of expected, but still it was a pretty crap match. Seth Rollins ended up winning it with, with a roll-up, which never feels good to see. And then we got a little beatdown from Baron Corbin before uh, Brock, Le Brock Lesnar's music hit. Came down to the ring, there was a little fumble with Paul Heyman, and then... Brock got swatted by Seth, so he was unable to cash in. I like that because I think it would have just been a bit of a shit shit storm, really, if Brock just went, "I'm cashing in on Friday," and then just fuck it, then just fucking cashed in on Friday. I, I want that surprise element. I like the fake outs. I want to see a lot more of that. But uh, I. And yes, my imitation of Brock is as a child because let's be honest, he sounds like a child. Next up, we got Demon Finn Balor versus Andrade. For me, this was probably the best match on the card. Uh, both, both superstars actually did a, a great deal in this. I probably would have liked a lot more, but I th this match was still really good, and it's such a shame that it was on this pay per view. Uh, we we saw Balor kicking out for uh, receiving the Hammerlock DDT. We saw the Coup de Gras, we saw fucking quite... That that uh, DDT from the top rope, from uh, Finn onto Andrade, that was fucking incredible. But I uh, we ended up seeing the Coup de Gras into the 1, 2, 3, and Finn Balor retained. The next match that we got was Shane McMahon versus Roman Reigns. Again, this was... Well, to be fair, this, this just felt like a match. It was just a match that was there. Uh, a lot of interference from Drew, which I do like. It kind of pushes a little bit more forward for Reigns versus Drew, which we've already seen a million times, but hopefully we'll get Drew winning the next one. Uh, we ended up seeing Shane walking away with a victory on this after Roman was hit with the fucking uh, Claymore. I mean, I it, it was a match... There wasn't really anything to write home about here. Uh, for me, I don't know. It, it just didn't feel right. Then we moved on to Lars Sullivan versus the Lucha House Party. Uh, I, I, I don't want to get into this. I honestly don't want to get into this. It was a fucking travesty for the start. 
Lars, Lars Sullivan uh, won via disqualification. The Lutch House Party just twatted him. And then he just twatted them after the match. Next up, we move on to the match that Thomas got like two minutes into. And then didn't they want to watch anywhere. And I don't blame him. If it wasn't for the fact that I, I liked in these videos uh, and talking to you guys about what happened at wrestling, I would have turned this pay-per-view off. It fucking irritated me. Um, but this was Triple H versus Randy Orton. This match was very, very slow. Like, so fucking slow. We saw attempted finishers that were reversed. We saw Spinebusters. We saw... Orton with a headlock, like obviously the master of the headlock. No, um, honestly, like it was a match and it was slow. Jesus Christ, I've never been so bored. Um, uh, Randy Orton ended up winning this after hitting an RKO onto Triple H and getting the 1 2 3. There was nothing from it, there was no story in this. And Randy Orton won. Fair enough. Don't care. Moving on. Another match I don't want to talk about. Strowman beat Lashley. There you go. That happened. Don't care. Next up we had the WWE Championship match between Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, again, it was a match. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I, I kind of had hopes for this match. I mean, Dolph Ziggler's character might be boring. And proper meh, but it's Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler's great in the ring. Kofi Kingston also great in the ring. They could have put it on a fucking fantastic match. Instead, what we got was a standard match. A standard match. Uh, we saw Ziggler avoiding uh, finishers at times, which was really good. We saw Ziggler kicking out after receiving the SOS. Which, I I felt like maybe it's building, maybe it's building. Uh, on the outside of the ring, we saw uh, Kofi gone for the trust dive. Took them barefoot, but uh, Kofi hit a lot of it. And ended up, like, hurting his back. And Ziggler played to that. Ziggler ended up super kicking uh, Xavier Woods, which would end up playing into Xavier Woods hitting Ziggler, like, when the ref's back was turned. And then Kofi hitting the trouble in paradise to pick up the one, two, three. Kofi retains with an assist. I don't like that. He's meant to be the babyface. Maybe we'll get a heel turn. I don't know. But if we don't get a heel turn, then what's the point? Uh, Ziggler's getting a rematch inside a steel cage. Okay. We're seeing another match between these two. On to the 50-man battle royal now, and oh my god, can you pander any more? Fuck me. The good thing was right at the beginning we got like multiple entrances. Uh, like we got loads of people coming down to the ring, but we also got multiple individual entrances uh, from The Miz, Samoa Joe, Titus O'Neil, so that they could play on the Titus World Slide thing a bit. I didn't actually mind it. I mean, don't get me wrong over this whole Titus World slide, but fair enough, it was in there. Uh, and Elias and Cesaro. Cesaro got his in entrance. I, I, I absolutely love that. Um, but I, uh, having the, in, the rain entrances, that was good. So I thought this might have ended up pulling into something. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, I'm going to get into the ending and how that pissed me off. But the biggest thing that pissed me off was some of the eliminations. Like, we had Titus O'Neil eliminating the War Raiders or the Viking, whatever they're called now. Fucking, I'll, I'll, I'll just refer to them as the War Raiders, right? Titus O'Neil eliminated both of them. Even worse than that, Sin Cara eliminated Shinsuke Nakamura. Sin fucking Cara. Oh, I swear this whole fucking thing has just got right on my nerves. Before I move on to the end, let's talk about at least one good thing. It's nice to know that we got AOP back uh, because we saw both Rezar and Akum in this match. 
So hopefully we can push them back into the tag team division and actually do something with them, no fucking bury them like they did with the whole pissing thing. Final two in this match were Elias and what's his name? Mansoor. I don't know the guy. But you could t clearly tell that the they had, had they had him win right. They had um flipping Elias out oh, and over over and out whatever, right? And Mansoor won, and it was just clear pandering. Don't get me wrong, I could see the the fans in the stadium were loving it, but the thing is, you could have got the same effect having Ali won. Fair enough, we would have said like it was pandering, like we knew it was pandering, but. We would, have, we would have at least accepted it. We would have at least been a little bit more happy. Mansoor won. Beating the likes of Rick... Like, Ricochet was in this match. Cesaro was in this match. The Miz was in this match. Matt Hardy was in this match. There were so many other people who were like... Ali! Ali! So many other people that you could have had win this. Mansoor. Nah, uh, it was annoying. Did not like it, it was just obviously pandering. And after that we moved on to the final match of the night and I was expecting a bad match. Well, I, I, I wasn't really, I was expecting a bad match. I was more expecting a not too good match. If you get if you get what I mean there, like no saying that it's bad, just saying that it wasn't really the best. It was two old men going after each other. It ended up being two old men going after each other by the end of it you just felt sad we saw a lot of botching going on we saw goldberg bleeding we saw that choke slam and to finish it off right uh, the undertaker won it after this disgusting choke slam and they showed the undertaker's face and you could see just how unhappy he was and I hate to say this, I absolutely hate to say this, but there's got to be a time where you realise enough's enough and maybe it's just time to stop. And that's how I feel like it is with The Undertaker now. We've seen his matches get increasingly worse. And it's so upsetting to see as a wrestling fan. Like, I grew up fucking loving The Undertaker. Who didn't he love The Undertaker? He was your biggest draw for WrestleMania. Like, you always wanted to see The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And that was just so saddening to see that. So there you go. There's everything that happened at this shit show of a fucking pay-per-view. Like, honestly... I've seen some bad pay-per-views. I mean, fucking hell. Uh, the greatest Royal Rumble was near the best. Crown Jewel was near the best. This is the worst of the fucking worst. I hated it. I despise the, everything that this fucking pay-per-view is. Oh, I know I've gone on a rant and you can probably see how fucking angry I am. Like, I'm a passionate wrestling fan. Like... Like, I'm sure, like, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're probably a passionate wrestling fan. And to see this going on, I just want better. I just, I just want better than this, please. I did lose, so I will be facing the forfeit. Uh, so stay tuned for that, probably next week. Later this week, we'll do the forfeits for Double or Nothing and TakeOver. You looking forward to it? No. No, didn't think so. <laughs> but I um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I would say I hope you've enjoyed Super Showdown, but it was shit. Hey, if anybody did enjoy it, let me know. Uh, but I, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to butt fuck that like button, please.